caste as a source of discrimination, let alone oppression, has not even been acknowledged really by any city in the United States. We don't have statistical data for Seattle, but we do know anecdotally from many tech workers who have come to me personally and told me that they face discrimination. As uh, myself coming from a South Asian background, I grew up in India. I have been aware of the caste system, you know, painfully aware all my life, you know, throughout my childhood. And I know that I am in no, my life is in no way unique. Caste is ever present in India and it is important that we acknowledge it. This is absolutely the result of a grassroots efforts by many organizations alongside my socialist city council office. If you are watching this and you live in the Seattle region and you care about banning caste discrimination, then you have to be with us on the front lines. You cannot be, uh, you know, you cannot just be watching this on the internet. Hello and welcome to the News Minute. In a move that could ensure greater protection for Dalit workers in United States, particularly in Seattle city, one of its council members, Shama Savan, has proposed a legislation to ban caste-based discrimination in the city, in workplace, in accommodation, and in several other areas. This is seen as a big victory for the Ambedkarite movement in the United States and in several other parts of the world. To talk about this proposed legislation, the ordinance, joining me in this broadcast is Shama Savant, who is also the member of uh, the Socialist Alternative and the council member of Seattle City. Thank you so much for joining us, ma'am. Uh, I want to start this conversation by asking you about uh, why do you think Seattle City needs uh, a legislation to ban caste-based discrimination? Is it that rampant in those uh, areas? Thank you for having me on, on this uh, topic. Uh, just to clarify, first of all, we haven't won the ordinance yet. What we have done, we meaning the movement that I am part of, the social, uh, so South Asian American activists, immigrant rights activists, and tech workers and union members, alongside socialists from my organization, Socialist Alternative, we are all advocating for this ordinance. And I am a city council member. I'm one of nine council members. I'm the only socialist on the city council. The other eight are Democrats, and they haven't yet said whether they support this or not. Uh, so it is. It, I, I do agree with you that it is a huge step forward that we have even uh, come to the point where we can bring this ordinance forward, but the vote hasn't happened yet. And that's why I really appreciate you covering this story because we need support not only from all across America, but all across India as well, in order to make sure that we put pressure on the city council to vote yes on this. And as far as your question about is it rampant, actually that's part of the problem, you know, that caste as a source of discrimination, let alone oppression, has not even been acknowledged really by any city in the United States. So if we are able to win this, actually this will be historic not only because this will be the first time in Seattle that caste will be legally recognized as a source of discrimination in, uh, in employment, in housing and education, but also because we hope that it will uh, be historic in that this will this first in the nation legislation can then be won by working people, by immigrant community members in other cities uh, as well. And uh, we we don't have statistical data for Seattle, but we do know anecdotally from many tech workers who have come to me personally and told me that they face discrimination. And in addition to that, we also know from other cases, for example, in the August of 2022, which is last year, the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing won an appeals court ruling to proceed with a lawsuit that alleges that a Dalit engineer at Cisco Systems, which is, uh, as many of your viewers know, is a multi-billion dollar tech conglomerate, was actively targeted. So this Dalit engineer was actively targeted by his dominant caste managers. He was denied professional opportunities, raised promotions because of his caste background. And in fact, in their report about this case, the New York Times wrote, quote, the technology giant got away with ignoring the persistent caste discrimination because American laws don't yet recognize caste discrimination as a valid form of exclusion, allowing companies to operate in willful ignorance of the ter terrifying realities of caste. So this is exactly why my office has put forward this ordinance because it's not even acknowledged. So this is the first step in order to ban caste discrimination. But in addition to that, we will also need to fight for enforcement. 
And uh, I, I heard your speech. In your speech, uh, you have said that uh, caste discrimination goes unreported and it's often hidden. Uh, can you elaborate on uh, uh, that? Yes, you know, part of part of the reason it's hidden is because it, it's not something that affects the wider population of working people. It is something that, uh, that specifically people of South Asian origin or other immigrant origin are affected by. But as we have said repeatedly, and as I've said as a socialist, uh, that that we cannot we cannot address caste oppression unless working people as a whole unite to fight against it because racism, sexism, caste oppression, other kinds of oppression really are uh, they, they stem from class society as a whole. You know, from thousands of years, of course, we know in India, but right now the global system of capitalism benefits from dividing ordinary people uh, into these kinds of groups, you know, across gender, race, or caste. And that's why uh, we want to bring this out in the open. And part of the reason it's not known, as I said, is because not very many American working people know about it. And we know, but we know from, uh, from South Asian American workers here that it is happening. And uh, we, we, it's not for nothing that, as I mentioned, the Cisco case happened, but also, Something very important has happened in the last year or so, which is the California State University System, which is the largest four-year public university system in the United States, has recently banned caste discrimination in addition yes. to a couple of other universities. Now, this is very important because we're not, when, when we talk about Cal State, this is a university system of 23 different campuses across California State. So it's really important that the campaign there by rank and file students and by uh, supported by the faculty there has won this because it is first of you know by winning this they have put the question of caste discrimination out in the forefront in the first place so you said that uh, this issue has been unaddressed when did you actually think that something needs to be done you know we have i mean as, as uh, myself coming from a uh, south asian background i grew up in india I have been aware of the caste system, you know, painfully aware all my life, you know, throughout my childhood. And I know that I am in no, my life is in no way unique. Caste is ever present in India and it is important that we acknowledge it just in the same way that in the United States, the question of race and gender um, discrimination has been put in the forefront. The Black Lives Matter movement in 2020 uh, which uh, uh, which which united it was the largest street protest movement in US history and it united tens of millions of working people young people across all races you know all working people young people saying I regardless of whether I am personally black or white I want to live in a society that is free of r racism similarly as far as caste is concerned, this issue has been on our minds, you know, our meaning the South Asian activists and also other American activists and socialists and union members for the last couple of years. And we are encouraged by the fact that uh, activists in other univer in universities uh, across the nation, um, especially Cal State have won this. And so we are really inspired to try and make Seattle the first city that, uh, that can win this. And we're hoping that it won't stop there, that other cities will also be able to do this. Again, working people will have to push for this. I would not, we should not have illusions in the Democratic Party establishments of these various cities because they are not on our side. But if working people come to fight for it, we can win it. Okay. And how long you have been discussing about it and what are the kind of alliances that you have made? Uh, what is the effort that has gone uh, into bringing this piece of uh, legislation or at least proposing this piece of legislation yes this is absolutely the result of a grassroots efforts by many organizations alongside my socialist city council office and the conversations have been going on for several months you know in 2022 and it was important that we basically open this new year 2023 with this legislation that's very important that we have taken this up as a big fight in January of this year itself. And we have been supported by Equality Labs, which is an organization based in many different cities, including in the Bay Area in California, who have said that they are proud to join 
this campaign to win this historic ordinance to ban caste discrimination in the city. They are a national Dalit civil rights organization that have worked with institutions. And I think they were part of the California State University movement. And in addition to Equality Labs, we also have the support of the Ambedkar International Center, Ambedkar Association of North America, Ambedkar King Study Circle, and then locally in the Seattle area, the Coalition of Seattle Indian Americans, and also the local branch, and also nationally from the uh, Indian American Muslim Council. So you can see that this spans across, for South Asian and other immigrant activists, this spans across caste, across religion, there is such strong solidarity that we want to ban caste discrimination in our city and we want this movement to go nationwide. And then last but not least, this would not be possible without the organization that I'm myself part of, Socialist Alternative, because as socialists, we are against every form of oppression and we understand that that goes alongside with economic exploitation of millions of people and in globally billions of people under capitalism. And that's why also, as I say, we shouldn't have illusions that the politicians who support the interests of the billionaire class are going to be on our side. They're not going to be because these kinds of divisions and the specific uh, um, uh, discrimination and, and violence and uh, other atrocities that are directed at specific groups amongst us, that benefits a system that ends up uh, and, you know, um, enriching a very small proportion of people at the top at the expense of the rest of us. So that's why this is important that we have this kind of unity to win this ordinance. Okay. Uh, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, you told me that, uh, you know, several people have uh, reached out to you and they have narrated their experience of uh, caste discrimination in big tech companies. That is something that is uh, unexpected uh, because big tech companies, uh, uh, you know, if they are indulging in caste discrimination, that's absolutely shocking. Can you just elaborate on that? What kind of discrimination people face, uh, and uh, do uh, you know people, uh, uh, you know, uh, are they open about uh, identifying their caste in those companies? If you're working in those companies, are they uh, open about their caste? Are they open about their identity, or how does this entire discrimination take place? Yeah, because in in India, question. because your 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 you also have your Indian uh, you know origin, uh, your roots are uh, you know out of Indian origin. You understand because here in India, uh, it happens physical and uh, you you can see all that. But in tech companies, I'm told that it happens in a very subtle manner. So can you just elaborate on that? Yes, you're you're actually totally right that it have it, it's very much hidden and invisible, and it is hard to put. You know, it's hard to uh, clearly uh, sort of make it uh, appear out in the open that this is happening. But uh, what you see is uh, is, is an ex the example of Cisco that I gave. That is a that is a that is in many ways a representative example of what is happening on a more um, sort of national basis across tech corporations. And I wouldn't say it's only limited tech corporations. Co corporations. But the reason we are talking about tech corporations in the tech sector specifically is, you know, not surprisingly, because we do have a higher proportion of workers in the tech industry who are of South Asian origin. So, you know, the, the, the caste system and the caste hierarchy and the discrimination and even worse, based on this concept of caste, which I completely reject, obviously, if it's not obvious already, um, that is now part and parcel of life for South Asian Americans in the United States. And so uh, the discrimination comes, uh, you know, most uh, blatantly in the form of de being denied raises, being denied promotions, being sidelined in tech teams, uh, but in much more daily and less visible basis, it also comes in the form of being uh, you know, being the subject of caste slurs, being told, be sort of, you know, all these implications, remarks being made informally, uh, that that remarks that imply that people of lower caste or Dalit tech workers don't have the skills, they just got in because there was affirmative action, uh, that, that they are not actually intelligent enough to be in those positions. And in fact, we had 
one of the workers who uh, spoke at our the press conference on Tuesday where we announced the legislation, the fight for this legislation, one of the workers who spoke was from uh, from a dominant caste who spoke in favor of this legislation who works at Microsoft. And he was talking about how inside the Microsoft Corporation, they've had discussion because there are several anti-caste tech workers who want to push back against caste discrimination and who stand in solidarity with their Dalit, uh, you know, their fellow workers who are of Dalit origin. But they, he was reporting about how when they had that discussion, there was so much pushback against it from those of the dominant caste who are in favor of the caste system and who are opposed to something like this ordinance that I, that my office has brought forward. And there were pretty, he was reporting that there were pretty hideous remarks about the Dalit community. And that's the sort of environment that gets fostered if it remains invisible. And that's why it's important that you're pointing out that this, this is not talked about. And so if it's not talked about, then it is easy for <clears throat> this kind of oppression to not only uh, be maintained, but to worsen, because if you don't acknowledge it, then it doesn't exist. And so there's no voice for our Dalit community members and Dalit working people who are facing this on a daily basis. People have also reported about how uh, in within the their contact with other South Asian, mm -hmm. upper caste South Asians, Dalit, Dalit people have reported uh, how they get, um, get uh, they, they, they sort of demonize they are again, you know, they have all kinds of insulting remarks directed at them. And we want to nip this in the bud because we know, we know what's happening in India. In fact, because of the reactionary right wing Hindu fundamentalist regime of the BJP and Narendra Modi, the attacks on Dalit people, on Muslims, on people of other religions, on women, these are all, these have all been ramped up because there is such a, an escalation of an atmosphere of Hindu fundamentalism and really reactionary and backward ideas. We know what can happen when there is a really there's there's an absence of courage of, of talking about this, and that is why we are taking this step. And you know, to give you another really egregious example, I don't want to give the impression that this is this has uh, happened on a very common basis, but it's to give you an idea of how bad it can get if we don't fight back. In 2001, federal law enforcement officials in the United States and they convicted. This guy named Lucky Reddy, Bali Reddy, who was an upper caste South Asian American, he was one of the uh, richest landlords in Berkeley, California. He owned over a thousand rental properties worth tens of millions of dollars. And he and his family members were, uh, were um, convicted. This is not just charged, you know, they were convicted and he served a prison sentence. He, he pleaded guilty. Uh, uh, they were convicted of trafficking multiple Dalit minor girls and young women from India, from from uh, uh, the south, south of India, and subjecting yeah. them to sexual servitude and labor exploitation here. So this is an egregious, not a very common example, but an egregious example of uh, that shows how bad it can be if we allow caste oppression to remain invisible, to, you know, to not talked about. And this case, by the way, also shows another. A point that I'm making as a socialist, which is that uh, it ends up the, if you allow the caste discrimination to go unnoticed and unspoken about, it ends up benefiting the richest people in our society. And that's why all working people, regardless of their religion or caste, if you want to live in a society that is free of these, uh, these horrendous oppressions, then you should join us in our fight. But, but uh, the, the, there is also this... Uh you know, push back from the other side. Uh, are you under some kind of pressure? Are you getting, uh, you know, any kind of pushback from uh, the other groups? Because uh, we, as I understand, uh, the caste lobby is actually very powerful, be it here in India or in South Asia or uh, even abroad. So these groups are very well organized, very well connected. Is there a pushback from the other side uh, for this uh, proposed legislation? Absolutely. I'm so uh, glad you mentioned this because this is extremely important. This is part of the reason why I've been saying from the get go that we should not have any illusion that it's going to be easy to win this. This is going to be a fight. So everybody who is wanting this ordinance to see the light of day, I, I'm urging you 
this is not going to be easy to win. You need to be out here. If you are watching this and you live in the Seattle region and you care about banning caste discrimination, then you have to be with us on the front lines. You cannot be, uh, you know, you cannot just be watching this on the internet and expect that we are going to win without your help. We need hundreds of people to show up in City Hall. And one uh, 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 sort of experience that we've already had of the kind of pushback you're talking about was in January of 2020, almost exactly three years yeah, ago. It's the uh, anti-CAA and NRC resolution that you brought in. Yes. I, I was exactly. about to ask you about that, like what kind of pushback you had faced then. Probably this is going to be much bigger than what you faced last time. Oh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. I mean, that was big enough, and I'll, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. But we, we expect that the pushback from... The, the opposition and really vicious opposition from those who support the Modi regime, those who harbor right wing ideas, those who are deeply reactionary and hateful towards lower caste and Dalit community members. We expect them to show up. But as you correctly said, it is going to be a more vicious opposition because this is an ordinance, you know, ordinance, meaning it will actually bring about a change in Seattle law. And it will be the first step. You know, I don't want to say it's all going to end in one day. Obviously, oppression will not end unless capitalism itself is replaced by democratic socialism globally because capitalism benefits from oppression. So we shouldn't think that oppression is going to end. But uh, the first step of banning these kinds of discrimination that we see in workplaces and schools and in housing we we and, and also preventing these horrendous uh, acts of sex trafficking as as i mentioned we will need laws like this one so this is a strong ordinance it's going to be enormously important and as i said nothing less than historic if we are able to win this because it will be an actual change in the law and it will be the first step to bring about a material shift in the experience daily life experience of dalit community members and tech workers in Seattle and hopefully in the rest of the United States, this is a you know this is a thousand steps ahead of what we had won in January of uh, February of 2020, which was the resolution. And and I say resolution because it it didn't it, you know it was it was the con it was a condemnation of the anti-Muslim anti-poor citizenship laws, the CAA NRC laws that were put forward by the Modi regime at that time. But it was it didn't have uh, it didn't have the you know the city council does not in Seattle does not does not have legal jurisdiction over the Modi regime in India. So in that sense, it was I mean it was a very strong statement. It was again in that case also it was historic because it was the first one and it put pressure on uh, Democrats in other cities and also in the U.S. Congress to take some action in terms of expressing their opposition to the Modi regime's anti-Muslim citizenship laws. But it was a resolution. It was not an ordinance. It could not have legally changed anything. So this is even more powerful than what we won then. And even then, just for the city council taking a formal statement on in, in condemning the Modi regime's actions, even there, we had massive opposition from the Sanghis, the people who are in um, support of the BJP regime, those who are ideologically close to the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, these are these are people who harbor really reactionary ideas. And the way we uh, defeated them and forced the Democrats to vote yes in favor of our resolution was by first of all by clarifying just through correct ideas that you cannot, you know, these are Democrats. They, and, and remember that was during the Trump administration, mm. every single Democrat on the city council was, you know, they, they love engaging in progressive rhetoric. They all were saying we're against Trump, we're against the right wing. We made it clear. If you are, if you say you're against Trump and the right wing and you vote no on this resolution, it, that doesn't mean you're against the right wing because you it, it, it means nothing to say you're against the right wing in the US and then be party to right wing policies and, and horrendous reactionary ideas in another part of the world. It doesn't work. If you're against no. oppression, you have to be against all oppression. If you're against the right wing, then you have to be opposed to the right wing, whether it's in the United States or Brazil or India. That's one thing we clarified where, you know, we need international solidarity of that kind. The other reason we won, and this is the pre 
most important lesson that activists should take from our successful fight at that time, which is that we have we brought hundreds of workers, working people, not only of South Asian origin, but all of all races together, black, white, Native American, and in addition to South Asian workers who all stood here in solidarity. When I say here, I mean in city hall chambers. This was you know, before the pandemic and before stay at home. Uh, we, we brought hundreds of people into city hall and we made it clear to the Democrats that if they voted no, we are all clear and they will be exposed as people who stood with the right wing. And that's how we put pressure on them to vote yes. And all of this was important. I'm not, I'm not you know, this is in no way an exaggeration what I'm describing because uh, if we had not done that, there's every likelihood that many of the Democrats would have voted no on the resolution. One, because you know, under this pretext that, well, I'm an American, this issue has nothing to do with me, which is a complete falsehood, of course. Uh, but also because they they wanted to buckle to the pressure from the Modi regime, you know, the, the consulate of India from in San Francisco, mm. which obviously serves the Modi regime, they wrote a letter to the city council. I'm happy to share that letter with your viewers if you want to read some parts of it. But where uh, they, they basically put, they, they basically told the Democrats that you shouldn't get involved in this. You don't know anything about this. This person, meaning me, uh, you know, I was completely wrong about all of this and that they, they should stay away from it and that such a resolution should not see the light of day. I mean, okay. that really put fear in the uh, minds of the Democrats. And the only way we overcome came that and forced them to vote yes was because hundreds of people showed up. OK, I also went through your uh, ordinance, draft ordinance uh, of the Seattle Municipal Code. Uh, it's very clear when it comes to, you know, uh, gender based discrimination, uh, discrimination based on race, color, sex, religion, gender identity, sexual orientation. Uh, but uh, now caste has been included. So it's a relatively new idea, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a piece of legislation. So what kind of awareness is there in, within the system about caste, about dealing with caste related issues? Because that is something which is important, uh, merely adding caste or uh, discrimination in a piece of legislation is one thing. But actual awareness about caste related crimes, caste related uh, discrimination is uh, basically that that idea to understand that is something which is uh, more important. Uh, so what kind of awareness is there within the system to understand this map? I definitely agree that we need to be educating American working people about what caste is and what caste discrimination looks like and why they should be against it. However, I wouldn't say I wouldn't use the word merely in winning this ordinance because as I just described, winning this ordinance itself will be a big fight and we will not win unless we have hundreds of working people speaking up about this and they're only going to do that if they understand what the issue is. So I, I wouldn't uh, separate winning the ordinance from the educational part. I mean, that has to go together, which is precisely why we didn't just post the ordinance on the website. We held a press conference with a number of speakers talking about how, you know, including Dalit speak, Dalit tech workers themselves talking about how this affects them in the workplace, giving personal accounts of this and letting uh, all, all the American uh, working people here know about the Cisco case, the steps that have been taken by California State University, by Brandeis and Brown University. You know, these are universities that have banned caste discrimination in uh, on their campuses and explaining why did they do that? You know, uh, why was it important for them to do this? The other part of educating working people here about why this should matter to them is also drawing the links, as I've already done uh, in our conversation, between caste oppression, racism, and sexism. You know, explaining that these are not just existing in different pockets, but they are all stemming from the same exploitative class society, and that we all have an interest in um, in fighting these oppressions and ultimately putting them to an end by actually fighting against capitalism itself and bringing about that kind of unity require, does require education. And part of this has already been done by many union members. So for example, the Alphabet Workers Union, which represents over a thousand Google workers, and they're not all South Asian, they're of different uh, national origins and different races. The Alphabet Workers Union issued a very important statement last year 
where they said that the fight for civil rights of caste oppressed people is a workers fight see so we're not uh, you know we're hardly the first people to say and my office is hardly the first office to say that this is an important fight for all workers union members rank and file union members in the tech industry themselves are recognizing this my last question on this uh, ordinance uh, when is this expected to come up for voting and uh, before that what is that you are planning to do you already said that you are going to involve other student unions and other organizations and how massive this campaign is going to be and uh, to what extent uh, uh, do you think that this will have an impact in the united states the ordinance will likely come up for a vote in february or early march uh, it's not entirely in our control in the sense that the council president will have something to say about the scheduling however the scheduling also itself is a political fight and we will you know we will be demanding that there will be no delays and that there is a vote as soon as possible so it will be around mid to late february or early march that's a timeline in order to make sure that we are able to win this we are in addition to the sharing the statements from the workers who have spoken up at the press conference my office has also launched a community petition so we are we we have we're sharing that uh, online but we're also going to have tech workers and others who are fighting for this ordinance including members of socialist alternative we will be collecting petition signatures in person outside gurudwaras and mosques and temples and grocery stores to make sure that our community members other south asian workers whether in tech or not small business owners they understand that this is their fight also and that they should sign this petition and then come to city hall and testify in front of the city council provide their own testimony we've already gotten almost 400 signatures actually we just launched the petition tuesday afternoon so it's it's uh, less than 2 days and we've already got 400 signatures so that tells you the kind of support we have very soon we're also going to be hosting a rally here in seattle where we will have many people speaking up here and uh, you know one of the speakers at the press conference said that especially our black community members and black the black working class needs yeah. to be part of this because it connects with racism as well yeah if if, if this uh, legislation gets uh, approved and adopted in uh, seattle city council can this be replicated in india as well at least uh, you know workers can they demand that uh, multinational companies like google microsoft and amazon that are located in india can adopt something like this in their company policy as well is if we are able to get other cities in the united states to also push for this ordinance and win it successfully then it could help uh, working people in india to or uh, put pressure on the multinational corporations from the us to ban discrimination in on their india based campuses you know so for example if google microsoft and so on are based in india then you can demand that they ban discrimination on their campuses that are located in bengaluru and other cities okay right thank you thank you so much for talking to us thank you so much i thank appreciate you. it